What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fi with my man Eric Sheet Tabor. We are back. We have it's been a while. We've got the team back together again, and uh, hopefully, going to be in a bit of week. Sheets, tell us about Italy a little bit, real quick, and then we'll jump into this slate. But uh, good to have you back, man. Good, yeah. So Italy was great. I had never been before. My my uh, my son was uh, has been studying there for the studying quotations uh, for the past uh, for the past month, and so we took the opportunity to go, and then we went to a little uh, place called Lake Como for a couple of days. People who have been to Italy know what it is, but I'd never heard of it before. Yeah, it's great. And like George Clooney lives there, and like a whole bunch of it's like it's like so much so relaxed, so chilled. And then we went like for the opposite of chilled. We went to Florence, which was just 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 a lot of people, a lot of tourists. And but it was really neat. You know, we 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 did the museum thing. We did, we went to Tuscany, went to wine museum, wineries and stuff. It was it was it was a lot of fun. I got to see my son and whatever it is. And just so you know, and so I had I had a little injury. So we we were one thing about the about Europe is the um all of the all of the airports are like. It's just like a, a, a crap show there. I mean, everybody's on strike. All the supply chain, everything. Especially you hear in about, the summer, yeah. Like everything, like it, it, every flight's delayed. And God forbid you have a connecting flight. You have to leave like two and a half hours in between to account for like all the delays that can happen. So we kind of pushed our luck going back. We only let only left two and a half hours. I'm like, what the hell? What's a big deal? Two and a half hours? No problem. So first the flight was delayed leaving Florence. Then there was this, this, this. And so then we had only a half an hour to get from lunch, whatever. So we were running, I'm not running, we were walking really quickly through the airport, whatever. And we came across incredible variants at the passport control. There was nobody there. So we were weaving, weaving, weaving. And I went smack literally into a cement pole. Like oh. You see here, this like big welt on my face oh, man. right there. Yeah, it was brutal. It, was, it was, wasn't really an injury. It was called, I call it a brain injury because I was just dumb. You know what I mean? There's a difference between natural injury. So it's actually just a brain injury. So this is my battle wound from uh, oh my God. Yeah, from Italy. Funny. Yeah, yeah. I could I could say that my wife was accosted by some of the locals, got into a fight with them. Nah, it was literally an airport accident. So, uh, but overall, really, really uh, a lot of fun. And uh, I am ready to get back into, I shouldn't have to apologize for this, but I apologize for not being able to stay up to, all the projections of all these sites that that they're going on when it's three in the morning local time. Sorry, I couldn't get that done. Did the best that I could. And yeah. uh, let's uh, let's get back after it. Yeah, we're gonna do the best that we can all the time, and we always do have that. You know, like give Saber Sim as a, as as a backup at the least, which is you know close enough, especially when it comes to baseball projections. Seriously, or, <laughs> where when you want to use projections, you know, there's we've talked a lot about how to use them, but when you're talking about fractional points, differentiating things like. It's, it's really in baseball in a game that with that much variance, it, it does, you know, if, if she it's, gets them out in the morning, even and, and it, at all, let's just say yeah. it, it, they're not going to be anything crazy different by the evening. There's not like a massive switch or something. It's not like a basketball. If somebody's, if the point guard's out that all of a sudden we have to, we have to play like three other guys from that team. This is not the same thing. And, and we can't be, you, you know, being a, being a slave to projections is different than using projections in a positive way. And I think that we get sometimes a little carried away. So just, she, you know, and also we're human. She says, she's going to have vacation. I'm going to have days where I can't make it in. And uh, we're, we're going to, you know, we have with Saber Sim, we have Rody doing the live shows. We've got all of our plays of the day and all the, my cores, my early my builds, which ended up, by the way, one of the builds that I posted was one, the one that won the 250 the other night. And it was one of my early builds that didn't change anything. So you could have literally copied me and won on that one. Um, but we're doing the best we can and uh, we appreciate all you guys who have hung in there with us but sometimes not everything's going to work out perfectly it's uh, even for sites with 10 times the manpower we do it's gonna you're gonna have issues so with that said I'm excited about this week I'm excited to be back live this, this evening with you guys so, and uh, so, so just so you know okay so I'm gonna share my screen just you know how much I missed DFS I came back and fired up like I just fired up I fired up lol for four this morning Took down first place. Thank you very much. Let's go. Wait, hang on. So then I, I went and I felt I did feel bad. I wasn't on top of all the projections, everybody else. And somebody's like, and last night they're like, are you going to do tennis for tomorrow? I'm like, <sighs> I didn't see it till like four this morning because I was still on the European oh, time shorter. So I got to four in the morning and I'm like, you know what? I am going to put up tennis. So I put up tennis. And then even for my own freaking, whatchamacallit, for my own play, the main contest was dead. So uh, what I did was I just made my best lineup and I put in all these like small ones and look at it first, beautiful. first, first, third, fourth, all like kind of like small satellites or whatever. Yeah, that's beautiful. Though. F everyone. You know what I mean? I'm, re I'm ready to go back and kill. Let's so, do it. Let's get after it. I love it. Sheets. 
So let's uh, let's let's get into the MLB for, uh, and I'm going to go into the Bobby tournament as my shell. Let's pull up the 250, which is what he won last, what you won last week. Yep. Um, and let's see if we can't make heads or tails of this. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so we've got a. Uh... We've got, a, you know, some interesting things that I just want to point out that in terms of like, I actually like looking at the difference between like the, the projected run lines from Sabersim versus the uh, regular sites. Like, Sabersim has this game almost a full run higher really? than the actual Vegas betting line is, which wow. in general makes you feel that there is some extra value maybe that you can get out of this game. And I, and I do like looking at things like that as a general rule of some, or not a rule of thumb, but something that sort of piques my interest. Um, I'm not, it's very simple for me what I'm doing in this game. I have I have interest in uh, Brubaker, and I have interest in Pittsburgh as of right now. Uh, Brubaker may seem like a longer shotish play. I'm curious where the field ends up with him tonight because I don't have him currently being owned very much. But I I like Brubaker and and I and I kind of like you know at least a mini stack of Pittsburgh. Um, you know borderline ish bullpen game. Killen has gone five and four in his first two games, so not exactly a bullpen game. And you've just got so many cheap bats that I'm sort of I'm sort of intrigued to take a shot here in Pittsburgh. And, you know, it's not like it was Pittsburgh early in the year where it was 60 degrees. It's 70. It's, you know, 75 degrees, um, not much wind or anything like that. But I think like Vogelbach, Brian Reynolds, Cabrian Hayes and O'Neill Cruz, who might be 2K leading off. You, you could just build a mini stack for like nothing and do whatever you wanted with the rest of your lineup. So I kind of like the idea of Brubaker with some some Pittsburgh, but probably, probably a two or three man Pittsburgh is where I end up in my big buy-ins. Yeah. So I played yesterday and I, and, and, and uh, I didn't win, but I, you know, I hit on that other that Pittsburgh dude with the hundred home runs. I hit the, the, uh, the Krzyzewski guy or whatever. Um, I didn't see anything yesterday. What, what he hit a few of Yeah. Runs? Some yeah. dudes. Sawinski hit like oh, three Sawinski. home runs yeah, or yeah, something Sawinski. like that. Yeah. That's right. Three, three home runs. That's right. Three home runs. That's right. Wow. That's awesome. Um, and the other thing I played, I, I actually also played that other guy who didn't do as well. That guy that you, you turned me on to from Pittsburgh. Um, Brian Reynolds. Was, no, 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 no. Uh, a rookie, I think. Um, uh, Cal Mitchell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what he did, but I, I played him. So I, I, was, I was looking at Pittsburgh a little bit. For today, um, I have both Brew Baker and the Killian guy as kind of equal kind of, uh, you know, SP2s. I, I'm, I'm guessing, by the way, that the reason why the official run total is different from the Sabres, so I think one of them is probably missing win data. I don't know which one it is. Mm -hmm. um, that would be my guess. Because like, you always tell me that, but I don't know, that well, actually it's not even a Chicago game. Shoot, I thought maybe yeah, it was a Pittsburgh one, and it's, it's not much win today. So I, I, okay. I, I, they do it sometimes with, with, with Sabres, and it usually comes back down somewhere in between between what the final line run, run line is. But okay. what happens, what I've noticed a lot, Sheets, is it happened in the NBA games, too. The, the 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 final total would end up shifting more towards what Sabersim had it projected as, which I thought was interesting. I actually do have Pittsburgh as kind of a, you know, an okay value option as well. Um, not the bad, not my favorite, but but okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if in my big buy-ins I'll get to much of anything here. Um, but you know, if if I get to Brew Baker and Killian in my, you know, in, in MME, I'll certainly won't, won't x them out. And if I get to Pittsburgh, I certainly won't ask him, but I don't think I'm prioritizing any of them. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, for what it's worth, I really think that Pittsburgh value is getting overlooked a little bit on this slate. So I, I'm, I'm going I'm to I think I'm going to be on that one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be. Okay. Let's move over to uh, to a game that I think that is going <laughs> to have some interest um, for pretty much everybody. I'm, I'm guessing is I think that every I mean everybody's just going to play Boston, right? It's, we know, we know how this story goes. Even, even the early projections probably are under repping how high I think Boston ends up owned on this slate. So I think Boston is, is the chalk. I think they're pretty good chalk. Um, I would try to recommend not full stacking a team on the slate that's going to play very small. Um, it just feels wrong to play a bunch of guys who are going to be 30% owned in baseball, but that's really my only argument against Boston here. I, I don't really, I don't have anything else. I just, I, I, I just can't quite do it. I think you could make a similar argument for Detroit that you make for Pittsburgh. Although I like the Pittsburgh guys a little bit better. Um, a huge, huge park upgrade playing in, uh, in Fenway. It is only 68 degrees though. It's not the 90 degrees we've been having in, in some of these games that we've seen recently and no, you know, a little wind coming in from, from right field. So not quite as quite as good hitting weather as we've seen. But I, I'm I'm going to play some Boston chalk, but I'm probably going to keep it limited to a, a number of 
try to keep it, you know, less bats, or if I combine it with a Pittsburgh stack, maybe I can get away with it. But these guys are going to be really popular. What about uh, the cheapo from Bob Boston, the pitcher? Winkowski? Yeah, um, I think that my first feeling was that I, I prefer I prefer Brewbreaker. Uh, I feel a little more secure with his innings. Um, I also, you know, I, 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 there's nothing... I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as in love with it as I, I feel like some people are going to go there. And I, and I think I would prefer Brew Baker. I guess that's where, where I have it, but I, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I think, I think it's weird. Cause I think in the context of a slate, you know, you have, you have, you know, some, some, some payups that you're going to want to play mm-hmm. pitching wise. And then the question is, do you have to pay, pay down for something like Wachowski or Killian or even Brew Baker or Syndergaard or whatever? if you wanted to play guys like Toronto's or Boston or stuff, or is going down, I don't want to get overly, you know, I don't want to get to go, go too far into the future, but, or is like playing Darvish like enough, you know what I mean? Enough of the right. savings to bring all that up, considering that, Dar- that Darvish can be really popular as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, so that's why I think Winkowski is probably going to get, I don't know, he'll get ownership if you need to, if you need him, you know what I mean? I haven't really run builds yet, um, but I think between him and Brubaker and Killian, I think all three of them are, are, are going to be, are, are going to be are going to be sp2s they're going to get talked about let's just say that yeah um uh and yeah i have boston rated as one of the top stacks if not the top stack i have no the only thing i would say about it is that you know uh this is just me being a pain in the ass but fado uh, in his last game gave up like a thousand runs you know in, in only three innings and maybe maybe a little bit over you know people mm-hmm. are maybe a little bit over biased against that Mm-hmm. Uh, in game long watching, I don't know. Um, again, also, you're, he'd been pretty good before that, by the way. Yeah. So, I mean, you say, listen, I'm looking for any reasons, whatever fade chalk. So, I mean, that's not necessarily a reason to fade the chalk, but it's a reason why Boston might be more chalky than maybe they could be or should be. I don't know. Yep. Um, and I happen to right now have Detroit as one of the best value plays on the slate. Okay. Um, as far as far as hitting goes. So, um, and, well, they're all 2K, right? <laughs> I can mm-hmm. imagine. Um, and if, in fact, Winkowski becomes that dude that everybody plays, um, I don't think he will. But if he does, it makes obviously Detroit even better. So um, I'm kind of liking where we're here, here, where we're, where we're headed here. Like you're, you, 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 you started with Pittsburgh as kind of a good kind of a supplementary supplemental stack. You know, uh, maybe Detroit is a good supplemental stack. Mm-hmm. And I think that I think that. We're off to a good start with that, actually. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to, you know, that's what we want to try to do on these slates is try to try to get different as any way we can, and and if we have to play some chalk with it, we can we can afford to because we're getting cheap guys who aren't who aren't being owned at least as of early projections. Um, well, we have the uh, the two best pitchers on the slate in the next game. For what it's worth, by the way, I want to point out that Brubaker does have a five and a half K prop, which at sixty nine hundred is pretty reasonable. It's a little higher than everybody else's. The four and a half K prop for both Fado and uh, Winkowski three and a half in the first game for, for the, for the Cubs guy who's 5k. Um, then you get to the, to the big guys, uh, Garrett Cole and McClanahan. Uh, I, I guess you could just play them together if you want to. Um, I think that's totally play them together and stack pit or Detroit and be, be done with it. Right? Yeah. Something like that. I mean, it's, it's, you can get them in. It's not going to be that tricky. Um, yeah. I, I like both these guys. I am currently having a hard time deciding which one I want to use more of. My instincts are telling me, I always usually go cold, but my instincts are sort of telling me to, 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 to play McClanahan ahead of them. Um, and I think that if, I think if they're owned the same amount, I think I got to play Cole over him. But I sort of thought, I sort of was under the impression that McClanahan would end up a little bit lower owned just because people's fear, fear the Yankees and all the righties and everything. But McClanahan is just, I mean, he just doesn't really, has he even had like a bad game? I don't think he had, no, he's had a good, he hasn't had a bad game this season. Um, just tremendous strikeout stuff. I, I like both these guys a lot, and I'm, I'm not particularly interested in the hitting. However, I would say that taking a, a one-off on a slate like this, if you are going to play the chalky Boston thing or something like that, taking a one-off against Cole or playing, you know, a judge or Stanton against uh, McClanahan wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I think these two went against each other in their last matchup. Um and let's see what happened. Uh, McClanahan, seven strikeouts, two walks. And Cole, um, I think this was the same game. Yeah, right? yeah, it was. I, I believe yeah, it was. And, um, they both they both had 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 good games. Um, not great games, but good games. 
Yeah. Um, I would, I would, I, I would go so far as to say that um, if I was going to play a one-off, I would play Choi. Um, okay. Every time I seem to see Cole against Choi, Choi always gets the ball over the home. It's a homer. I don't know the actual BVP. Just yeah, my own yeah. visual and my own cerebral <laughs> cortex just always seems to have Choi hitting a home run off of uh, off of uh, off of Cole. Considering he only has like one home run the whole season, I, it seems kind of strange to think that. But um, uh, yeah, I actually have. Well, I mean, he, and I'll, just to, just to credit you though a little bit, he, he is nine for nineteen with three home runs off of him in his career. Oh, is that right? There Pretty yeah. Okay. So, so your eye test was was accurate. Okay, so I have uh, I. Have the Cole rate is significantly higher than McClanahan, which means, uh, and I also have him much higher owned. And and I guess the reason for that is, I mean, quite quite honestly, like the Yankees have like said, just infinitely better lineup right now than mm-hmm. Tampa. Um, so that's why Cole is going to be rated higher, um, and he's going to be owned higher. I think I think overall, I think it's efficient to do, take either one. You know, I don't think that the ownership discount is going to be that great relative to the projection, all that stuff. So I would. Um, I would probably lean. I really don't have a lean. I mean, either Cole or McClanahan, I think work. I think, I think you listen, I think you want to play one of those two and or, or Burns. You know what I mean? I think one of those three just kind of has to be in your lineup because all three of those can score over 30. You know what I mean? So, so, so I, I feel as though you want one of them. And I have no argument against either. Uh, I am, I don't think I'm going to, um, to, to play the Yankees. I don't think I'm going to play Tampa. Um, if anything, like you said, maybe like a one-off against Cole because Cole is very home run prone. Um, Od- but- McClanahan yeah. oddly is too because he'll challenge he- hitters. So as great as he is, he does give up some home runs. So I don't mind any of these one-offs. Like a Stanton on on Stanton is a is affordable. Uh, Judge is a little expensive as a one-off, but Stanton is very affordable. He would probably be my favorite for the Yankees. And then I I kind of like the idea of the Choi thing on the uh, on the other side. So I, I'm with you, Sheets. I, I think that. I think that the, the Choi thing makes some sense. What, what do you think about, um, you know, it's so funny. I don't know whether you, you didn't misspeak, but you, but you, you were, you're usually pretty careful about when you say things like this. So when you said McClanahan and Cole, the two best pitchers on the slate, like they're the two, certainly the two best DFS pitchers on the slate. Yeah. But are they, but are they the two best pitchers on the slate? Like I could argue mm-hmm. that like Freed and Webb are the two best pitchers on the slate. <laughs> right. No, yeah. it's a good transition into the next game. Yeah. Logan Webb is a really, really, really good real life pitcher. Yeah. He's getting the K's back up again. So he's starting to become more fantasy viable. It's a good pitching slate. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's anything I want to do with the bats here in this game. And I don't, I don't know if I'm going to end up with either pitcher. Nope. It's hard to, you know, like these guys have the same K prop as Brubaker. And, uh, I, I just don't see – I don't like the matchup a ton for either of them. Although although I could say that Webb, you could probably get away with it against Atlanta because Atlanta does strike out even though they have a lot of power and a lot of upside. So I think Webb would be my preferred of the two uh, two guys today. But I, I don't think I'm going to end up playing anybody in this game in my main lineups is my guess. Hey, there's one thing I wanted to mention, by the way, about the Yankee game that I, I wrote down uh, to, to mention. Um, you know, this is like true DFS, true transparency. So I'm really trying to put forth everything that goes through my brain, whether I actually mm-hmm. execute it or not. And if you didn't want, like, if Cole just somehow becomes like just uber pop, I mean, he will be. But let's just say he yeah. becomes just mega chop. You want a reason to fade him? Uh, again, Tampa lineup is rough. Okay, it, it's a roughly terrible lineup right now. But he, in his next start, he's home against Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, who he used to play for. Her. So there's a small chance he's looking ahead to the home game against Houston. He didn't he um, didn't play for Houston though. Garrett Cole? Mm-mm. You sure? Uh pretty, pretty sure I pitched for him two, 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 two right before the Yankees. Did I miss? Did he, he have that one year with? He did. You're right. I'm such an idiot. You know what? I totally blocked those that year out. I, I have I have some some trauma from Houston from from right. So right. I think yeah. I blocked it out. You're right. He did have that. So I don't know. I mean, again, again, just, I just, literally just, just forgot that. That's bizarre. I was like, I thought just, you were just, getting just, just up just, from Berlin. Just That's reach. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. Houston comes to the, to the to New York. The the, the crowd is going to be buzzing in yeah. that game in, in general. So yeah. uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I totally, I totally blew it. I, like I said, it's it's the trauma. It's the trauma that Houston put me through as uh, a Dodger fan, um, and and by the way, it put the Yankees through with the with all the cheating and everything. So, all right. So 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 that, that was one of the things. So I, I have no interest in Atlanta. I have no interest in San Francisco. As I mentioned, I think both pitchers are just good enough to keep me off the other the hitting, and the hitting is 
just good enough to keep me off of both the pitchers. Um, so I'm kind of just, that's going to be a good, good game, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Right. That's- right. Right. <laughs> um, this one is interesting. This one's really interesting to me. Because you've got the, okay. So, so <laughs> Lance Lynn, I mean, look, he, he's, he was terrible in the minors on his way back up. He was really bad his first game back. Uh, Toronto is not a team that you want to be bad against. At the same time, he's 5,800 and also has, if you want to talk about K, K prop per price, he's got the best one of the day. He's 5,800. He's got a five and a half K prop. Um, I'm open to it. Again, I feel like it, maybe it's getting too cute when we have so many good top end pitchers. I'm not particularly interested in Barrios on this slate because of how many good pitchers there are. But Lance Lynn at 5,800 is just a little bit intriguing to me. At the same time, I think that I'm probably going to end up uh, with Toronto as a major stack. I don't like stacking against ground ball pitchers. Lance Lynn, while he is a ground ball guy um, who has control historically, that is not who he's been over the last 15 starts he's had between the minors and the, and the majors here. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested in Toronto as a low owned stack and, and I might make them a priority instead of Boston as a way to get different unless I want to, you know, and then I could play Boston with my Pittsburgh, but I got my main stack be Toronto here. Um, And I'm surprised at the early projections that no one's going to do that. I don't think that's going to end up being the case because I do think that Toronto does make a lot of sense and people are probably going to get onto these guys more than the early ownership is showing. So I, but if they don't, I'm very happy to take a shot with Toronto and I am in large field. I'll probably throw Lance Lynn into a couple lineups. Yeah, I have Toronto as one of the one of the more popular, actually. I mean, not like the most popular, but yeah. I have I have them own. I mean, I yeah. have I have I have Boston, I have the Angels, and then there's like Milwaukee and Toronto. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I definitely have and, and listen, we, we we talked about a couple of value plays, pitchers you can play. So you can get these Toronto guys in um if you want. So uh I, the Lynn thing, I, I don't, you know, I, I'd love to, I'd love to do it, but I don't think I need to, you right. know, um, that's where I'm I'd at. rather, like you said, I, it's kind of weird to say, right. But I think I'd probably just rather just find, find the money for Brubaker if that makes any sense. Right. Um, but um, I think that Lynn is, 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 you know, he's, he's a veteran. You know what I mean? I think he's good enough to keep me off of Toronto. I think Um especially and, if they have ownership and, and early in the day your ownership tends to be more accurate because you're, you're taking it from more sources than what I am. So I, I would trust your ownership on that. And I do think you're right. That I, I do that's right. I think Toronto will end up with ownership just because uh, how can you not take a shot at Lan- on picking on Lance Lynn with the way and he, he just gave up 10 hits in his, you know, in his last. Uh, yeah. And in the minors, he gave up like nine runs in his last start or whatever. Yeah, it's like, he, it is, it is righty against all the righties. So I guess he's got, and he's good against him. righties historically, but yeah. Um, I, I might be interested in, um, you talk about low on whatever. I might be interested in doing something with Chicago, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think Barrios has had has had life kind of easy. Um, I didn't really go through it, but it just seems though he's like just a great play all the time because he's in like a great matchup. Um, so I just want to just check that. Yeah, um, you no, know, that you're accurate lately. I think that's actually been pretty true. But, but however, against Minnesota, he put up 38 fantasy points against them too. So former team. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, at Yankees, got rocked. Um, at, at, Angel, at Angels, got rocked. You know what I mean? So, again, he's some big, yeah, he's had some bit bad ones, some real bad ones. I mean, not that the White Sox are, you know, Yankees or, you know, whatever, but um, I don't know. Uh, something something different to do. I, I, might, I might consider them. But, it is um, 90 degrees in Chicago, so <laughs> – like this is probably a spot where, you know, if you do, if you, I think, I think you give a boost to both offenses here because of it being Chicago. Um, I mean, just this kind of heat in Chicago and right now the winds are sort of crosswinds, um, but there is pretty windy. So if the winds change at all um, right now, you've got it going across the field at 12 miles an hour, but 12 miles an hour, if it's, if it's blowing out is definitely worth noting, at least, especially in 90 degree weather. So I, I like, I, I like the idea of playing this game, even though it's probably going to be the Toronto side for me, which is, probably a little too chalky um that's where i'm at though all right um st louis milwaukee i think um i think milwaukee is just like a lock in this game um <laughs> I, I don't i don't you know i don't bet baseball or whatever it is but um you have you have mikolas coming off of 130 pitch you know no hit bid right um yep. 
And uh, then you have Burns against all righties. Um, uh, so I, I don't know what the line is. I'm sure what they're a two to one favorite minimum, right? Plus Burns uh, completely owns these guys. <laughs> like, I mean, they're just, they're, just, they're just a lock. That's the best I could describe. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What, what is the, the, the money line of this? Is it two, 200? It's got to be, right? I uh, let me I don't even follow it. I mean, yeah, it's uh, uh minus one seventy eight. I mean, all right. So anyway, yeah, I I, I do like um and listen, I, I listen if you if you try to stack teams against Nicholas, you're really like in a world of trouble. Um, like, but in a situation like this, I might take a shot. Um, mm-hmm. so Milwaukee Burns, also some correlation Burns Milwaukee. I uh, listen. I, I also try to like avoid attacking st louis with the logic oh you know they don't strike out that much you get them a strikeout pitcher they'll strike out just just fine um so so i like burns uh, as a matter of fact i I'm, I'm gonna put burns just about the same as those other two I, I actually might yeah i might revisit this and, th- and and i might have to re-rank burns as my favorite i mean look it's not he does this is an in-division game but the 100 plate appearances for the active lineup He's he's got a 45% K rate. So he struck oh out uh, so 46, he struck out 46 out of 100 and 101 bats. They have only walked seven times. They've only hit two home runs and 100 at bats. They're hitting 145 off of them. <laughs> I mean, these numbers are that's pretty, pretty jarring. And I think that we might be able to make an argument here that Burns, especially if somehow, which I don't think he will be that much lower owned, if he somehow ends up lower owned, um, yeah, that I mean, to be honest, if, if if people weren't paying attention and just just looked, or maybe if they people who are thinking the wrong way, there's no way they're going to let Mikolas throw like 120 pitches again. That's what I figured, you know. But uh, he, I mean, we should at least mention a 7,800 unowned guy against a strikeout team that he, and he's just a good pitcher. Like I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm not gonna, I'm not too many too many bodies today for me. I really like the Burns idea. I'm not getting to Milwaukee right now, but I understand the logic you, you use for it for sure. Um, but I, I like, I, I think Burns, I think instead of playing Cole and McClanahan together, I'll, I'll probably end up taking one of them with Burns. Um, those extra four points don't necessarily mean that much, but it's just, there's a lot of guys with upside and I'd rather, I'd rather play for maximum upside. So get try and get the wins as well. But yeah, this is a, this is a really good pitching slate. I mean, there's, we had some, we had a 15 gamer like last week or something that we didn't have one pitcher as good as like, the fifth best pitcher on the slate. I don't even know how that happens. It just is just weird how it works out sometimes like that. And then we get into another weird one sheets. Yeah. You know what? You can play freaking single card. I I, 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 I don't want him anymore. I don't know. When did I play him? I played him two games ago and I I, I got through six innings, giving up only one earned run. And I still only got 13 fantasy points. You know, (laughs) he just doesn't strike anybody out anymore. Um, I mean, in all fairness, look at his last three matchups of so the Dodgers, know, Boston, know, the Dodgers Yankees, and Red Sox. That's a tough, tough one. Now they're home against KC. So, yeah, he, he's got, I mean, it's tough. It's, he's, had a, he's had a rough go so far in terms of the draw. The That's luck of true. The draw. He has gotten Texas three times, and he's had exactly medium results against them. So I, I don't know. This is sort is of. He that, wait, well, let's put it another way. Is he that much worse than Brubaker? No. No. I mean, I. And, and a four and a half K prop is even a little bit intriguing against it, but Casey just doesn't strike out that much. And I think we're looking for ceiling. So I think I'm, I, I'm probably going to be on this, just spending up at pitcher by the end of this, because I just think there's too much upside with the Burns McClanahan Cole, um, even somewhat Logan Webb. And, you know, I, I, I do think Brubaker and Lynn are, are interesting enough and, and Syndergaard, but I just, well, well, I don't know if it's the right way to play on this. Let, let me home. ask, let me ask you this against Wit and Wit is uh is Syndergaard somebody you can just run off of or no? Oh, he's the easiest to run on in baseball. Well, I mean, you kind of have to play those guys, right? The problem is you're talking about paying uh, 5,300 for guys trying to get stolen bases. Right. right. That's, that's, um, true. that's true. That, that's a tricky well, situation. But Merritt feels 4,200. So that's, that's fine. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Wit's what, what's reasonable. And you've got the nice, you've got two great catchers always. That's the one thing you always like with a KC stack is you always are going to have two great catching options and you can pick either one of them um, with Melendez and, and, and Perez. And I mean, I think the Angels are going to end up being the other chalk tonight. I think it's, I think the Angels, uh, Boston, and then Toronto is my guess, uh, but the Angels being second. Um, I don't know where I stand on that. I don't want to play 30. I don't, I don't, I just see 30 percenters and I, I don't want to touch it. It's just like in baseball, I just stay away. And um, as you know, as Bubich is not a great pitcher or anything like that, and it's not a great bullpen behind him, 
it's not like he gives up, like he's given up five home runs and 10 starts. That's reasonable, but to play these guys at 30% ownership, it just feels kind of silly. Maybe, I mean, if you do play him, maybe you could play Jared Walsh. You'll get lower ownership as a lefty lefty lefty. Um, maybe you could throw in a Juan Ligaris down at the bottom of the order for minimum to try and get off the board. It's just hard to find a way that to get too excited about this. And it's, I mean, I, I also think it's they still have the shock of the angels just losing 900 games in a row and hard for me to see them as like a, a legit minus 200 favorite in a baseball game. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me, to my brain. Um, but uh, yeah, the angels certainly on paper do seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, it's just going to do you want to fight that ownership. And I kind of like your idea a little bit with the wit wit thing. And um, if you're going to use that as a secondary stack. Yeah. The angels, um, first of all, a little kind of a random stat that I heard um, about Mike Trout from this past weekend. Um, like he needs any more random stats about him. Um, apparently He's the, either the first person or the first person in a long time, but maybe the first ever, to hit four game-winning home runs in a series. Um, Did that really just happen? Yeah. I missed that over the weekend. Or they played a five-game series against Seattle, including like a doubleheader. Oh. He had four game-winning home runs. That <laughs> is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and game-winning would not necessarily be walk-off, but it was still like just yeah. game-winning home runs. Crazy, That's unbelievable. Right? Um, well, that doesn't mean I need to play him at thirty percent ownership, but uh, just another, another, another notch in my, my trout yeah. record. <laughs> um, like he needs them. Um, yeah, so I do have the Angels rated. Um, I don't know fourth on Fanduel. I'll say that, and I have them rated okay on on um, maybe fourth or so on DK also. But again, I got to see where ownership comes good. Right now, they're they're going to be really high owned. I'm I think gonna, they're going to be really really. Yeah, high so I'm probably going to end up get it end up off of that actually yeah it's, it's hard like I, I i like the you know i, I do think that the chalk is reasonably good with boston and the angels but i i don't know if i can play 30 percent guys on on these slates it just it just doesn't work with my brain <laughs> like i just it's baseball you know what i mean although then again people said the same thing about golf with fitzpatrick and of course he goes out and wins the tournament so sometimes you, you got to find the right mix of the of the chalk and the non-chalk on these slates sometimes so, 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 so now in the end, now you have you Darvish who throws a hundred pitches a game at home against Arizona uh, at 8,100. Um, I mean, yep. He, he, he might be the chalkiest of them all. I mean, by no, the end of this, right? No, no, no. Now people don't like to play him. They get afraid of playing him every time. And yeah. um, I don't know why entirely. I mean, he what, does what's get- the guy got to do? He was, he was, he, so he, in order, he was 9,500, then 8,900, then 8,400, now 8,100. Just getting better every game, too. Every game. And that's, um, that's that he was, by the way, he was the pitcher that I went a little bit off the board instead of the double spend up. And, and he was only like, I think he was 9% owned in that game against Chicago. Wait, let, 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 let's, let's, here's another ridiculous right, I won the tournament. I mean, I'm looking at this. When's the last time he went two straight games without a walk? I mean, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> he did. He did. In all fairness, have four hit hit by pat hit by pitches in those bats. Oh, though. oops. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it wasn't like he totally was. It wasn't wild or anything. Okay, fair enough. Um, I love the Darvish call. I, I, it's just I think that the more we get through this, I just don't think I can get to those cheap guys as much anymore. It just yeah. feels too cute. Um, I think Darvish. I mean, I think Darvish belongs in the same conversation with these other guys, and uh, I like the matchup for him. Uh, so I'm, I'm totally good with, with Darvish and, and the, the, you know, how about a little, a little, uh, Zach Davies back in San Diego, Zach Davies actually has pitched really, really well. I'm not talking about playing Zach. Okay. Davies. Don't, get, don't get me wrong, but I actually think this is a spot where I would consider San Diego. The problem is Davies is really good against righties and San Diego's lefties are Cronenworth who's six K on DK Hosmer, who hasn't hit a home run, as you would say, since the Eisenhower administration, Trent Grisham, who they won't, they won't take out from the bottom of the order, although he's shown at least brief signs of light late, life lately in terms of hitting the ball hard and uh, actually stole a base the other day, which felt good to see him do. So I'm, I keep waiting for the Trent Grisham breakout. It hasn't really been happening. Well, I, will, I, will, I will let you know that, that, that when you were away, I'm just looking here, he did hit a home run, but it was at Colorado, so it doesn't count. It was a Colorado, but he was a lefty lefty and he was batting ninth and no one played him. And I played him that day. Ah, okay. <laughs> or no, he's batting seventh. He's batting seventh that day. But, 30, um, 3,100 in Colorado. Yep. Um, 
And, and, he's, and he still wasn't getting owned because you couldn't you just, there were too many other outfielders that were too cheap. You've got Mazar really cheap. I just think it's kind of an interesting spot to consider. I don't think anyone's doing it. So I'm, uh, you know, you, 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 throw, you throw four of the lefties or the switch hitters, you know, between Profar, Cronenworth, Hosmer, Mazzara, and Grisham, four of those guys with, uh, with uh, you have know, no Machado. So I guess it would be Voight. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not exciting. I, I, I think I like just maybe a mini stack, if anything, more than more than a full stack. But yeah, it's it's tough sheets today because the, the full stacks that I like are, are going to be pretty popular. I think San, you know, Toronto and Boston are my favorite too. And I'm going to try to fade the Angels chalk. It is 83 degrees in LA, so it's nice hitting weather. But um, I'm kind of interested in going back to that Pittsburgh thing, and and uh, I also think that there's some merit to the to the, the Detroit thing you mentioned as well. And and you can you can do it. I mean, as far as Cole and Burns, you know, you, you or for example, you know, or and whatever, you can you could do it. Um, because while Boston is like a, is like a top set, they're not they're not like uh, you know Atlanta in Colorado. It's not like they're not like a lock or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've been pretty I, locky at home, though. They have to say they've been crushing the ball at okay. home. Okay, so go ahead, sorry. Um, so, I mean, like, I, I, I'm going to go back to a team like Milwaukee. I'll go back to a team like, again, like Pittsburgh. Like the, the, Some of those Pittsburgh guys can swing it. You know what I mean? Like you said, yeah. Brian Hayes, uh, the other guy, Brian Reynolds. Whenever I watch him, he seems to get a good, you know, hit the ball mm-hmm. hard. Um, Winsky with three home runs yesterday. <laughs> yeah, the Wisniewski or whatever hit three home runs yesterday. As, as and, and that other guy, Cal Mitchell, you said, is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I actually don't think the hitting is that – is that much you know, standout-ish, you know? Um, Toronto, you could certainly make a case for them, but you could certainly make a case against them. Mm-hmm. I guess, like you said, I guess Boston looks to be the most, you know, the most solid, but, you know, it's baseball. That's what it is. Yeah. And, and, you make, and, you, and you can mix it in. You can mix in, you know, you can mix in the, the Pittsburgh or the Detroit with the Boston, or you could throw in the San Diego, the three-man with the Boston or something like that and still be different enough to potentially, if you get the right guys, to get there. I mean, I just want to throw out, there's, there's an insane amount of cheap options today that are really good cheap options. I think um, Ortega's the probably batting third, 2.2 K Mazzara batting fifth at 2 K um, the O'Neill Cruz leading off at, at 2 K for Pittsburgh. Uh, just a lot of these Victor Reyes, 2.6 leading off for Detroit. There, a lot of these guys who were some of the guys, Bogobach at 2,700, Matt Duffy at 2,500, probably batting fourth for a popular Angels team. There's just a lot of value out there that you can at least fill in your lineups with. And they fill in as stacks with Detroit and um, especially with Detroit and San, San Diego and uh, Pittsburgh. So that, those are probably going to be my, my priority secondary stacks. And uh, on days like today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weigh in the heat as a big factor and I'm going to weigh in the ownership as the most important thing. Obviously. Yeah. Let me, let me throw in a couple of other cheapos that you mentioned. So, so um, Mazzaro, you mentioned mm-hmm. basically all the Detroit guys. I mean, yep. Robbie Grossman, 2,300, Riley Green, whoever he is, he's 2,100. Torkelson, 2,100. Reyes, 20, all the Detroits. It's crazy. Arizona, they have a 3K guy. If you don't want to play, if you don't want to play. Lagaris is 2K for the Angels. Suzanuski, again, he's 2,200. But another guy from the, from Boston, if he gets in, Rev Snyder, he's 2,600. I think it'll be Duran, but he's also, you know, only, only okay. 34, which is pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, Frenchy Cordero is 31. Yep. Uh, if, does Verdugo, does he get, is he going to play at 3,500? Yeah, he'll play. I mean, and he'll be the low owned one because he hasn't been hitting for any power this season. Okay. So I like the idea of using a little Verdugo if you're going to play them. Cause he, I, I do think he gets left out because the outfielders they want are going to be uh, JD and Duran. And they, you know, I think even Frenchy will be, probably similarly owned to Verdugo. So I think, I think it is a, it's a very fair slate. You know, you have some top pitchers, then you have those other, those other pitchers who, you know, like we didn't really highlight too much that, you know, you could probably count on for a decent game, like, like, uh, like Max Freed, right. Yeah. Um, who's going to be low. Old. But I just, I just feel as though that between Burns, Cole and, and, and McClan, I think one of them is getting 30, you know, I don't know exactly which one. I agree. Be. So I think you want to use one of them. Um, uh, I don't think this is the, I don't think this is the slate to double pay down just so I can get to all the Toronto's and Boston's, for example. Yeah. Uh, I probably do want to use one of the top pitchers. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, that's probably a good idea, but I'm going to include you Darvish into the mix. 
Yep. And I think that, uh, I really think that, you know, you, in terms of guys who can get 30 for you tonight, but I, I agree with what you said. I, the only thing I would say, and it's a thing that, that, that Goldie and I were talking about, and shout out to Goldie and, and, and Rody for, for covering last week. Yep, I, I know Rody covered, especially on multiple slate days and yep. doing it from his car. So really appreciate all that. Yep. Glad we were able to get some live shows out on those days for those of you who were playing. But um, I really think that, uh, that the one thing that I worry about sometimes with chalky, expensive pitchers is when they're in their division, because, these hitters are, you, you do, you do spend time getting to know these guys, not just facing them. Now Burns has dominated these guys, but the, all the top pitchers today, except for Darvish are playing or no, Darvish is too. They're all playing in inter, interdivision games. So just, just on a giant slate, when that happens, I'll tend to give the edge to a guy who's not in that game today. We don't have that guy. So they're all, they're all playing interdivision. Um, and you're just, just when you're more familiar, it's, it's usually harder to have that weird outlier, like 13 strikeout performance against somebody who's in your division than uh, if you weren't, then you, they only face you once a year or something like that, rather than four times. What What is the um, the money line on the Tampa Yankee game? Do you have that offhand? It's the the total. It's no, no, the, the money line. Of the oh, the money line is yeah. It's um. Let me grab it really quick. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, Tampa plus one eleven. New York minus one thirty one. Okay. Yeah. I, I was gonna I was gonna suggest uh, Tampa plus the whatever, but I, I was, I was hoping it a little bit more than that. Yeah. I think I, that's what I, you know, I would, I would think the same if it was like 140 or something, I think it'd yeah. be a really good bet actually. Yeah. But, to, to, to combine with my Milwaukee part of the parlay, which I'm not going to do. Yeah. Um, well, you're going to get the, the Choi three home runs off of Cole. So there you go. I'm going to get the Choi three home runs. <laughs> you could, you could just play all the other guys. If you get that three home run game from Choi, then you're that's in right. business. All right, Cheats. Well, great to have you back. Good luck to everybody tonight. I'm going to load up all my picks and bets and everything like that before three Eastern um I, all my early lineup builds which by the way again you don't you don't want to copy these things but you want to you can see what i'm doing i'm doing exactly what i'm saying and all of my final lineups are going to be pivots off of those early builds that you see and um they, and, they, and, they, and they, i will promise they, you this that if i put up my early builds that my my end builds are going to not even remotely resemble what that's yeah we're very different in this <laughs> all right <laughs> well, why you don't put them up? <laughs> let's have a great week good luck everybody